In this video, we're going to do a worked example showing how we use the unit load or virtual work method to calculate the deflections of a truss. So we're given an example truss here, and we have three bars on the truss, three joints. The truss has dimensions of three meters across the bottom, four meters across the top, and surprise, surprise, the high part news or the length of BC is five meters. And this truss is subjected to a 10 kilonewtons vertical load at joint C. And the problem asks us, find the vertical displacement of point C, and then go on to find the horizontal displacement of point C. We're also given the properties of each of the bars, and each of the bars has a Young's modulus of 200 times 10 to the 3 megapascals, or 200 gigapascals, so that is kind of representative of a steel section. And we're given that the area is 301 millimeters squared. Okay, and we're going to move on and show how we proceed with this problem. If we remind ourselves of the equation that we developed, we had one dot delta equals the summation of n n l divided by a e. So we're given a and e, we're given the lengths of the bars, and we're actually trying to calculate delta. And first of all, we're asked to calculate a delta in the vertical direction at point C. And we want to work out the sum of the forces in the truss of the N are the real forces in the truss. So we're looking for NAC, NAB, and NBC. And we get these when we apply the 10 kilonewton load. We also need to know the virtual forces in the truss. And so those will be when we apply, instead of 10 kilonewtons, just a one kilonewton load or a unit load. And from there we'll get the corresponding NAC, NAB and NBC. So that's when we apply a unit load. And then we'll show how we can grab all of this information in a tabular form to finally calculate the vertical deflection delta. But first, we need to calculate the forces within our bars and we need to use method of joints. So we're first going to consider the real situation when we have a 10 kilonewton load. So let's remind ourselves right down. Real loads. The first thing we need to do is find the reactions. So we'll draw a quick free body diagram of the entire system. And because of we have 10 kilonewtons, we have RBX. R A X and a vertical R A Y and the dimensions three meters and four meters. So because I have two forces going into joint A joint B, joint C, I have two forces going into joint A, so I'm going to choose to take moments about that point. So if I take moments about A, going in a clockwise direction, so sum of taking moments about A. So I have 10 kilonewtons multiplied by a lever arm of three meters, but that's going in the negative direction because it's going clockwise. I also have RBX multiplied by a lever arm of four meters, and this is also going 
in a negative direction because it's trying to go in a clockwise manner and for equilibrium oh. and we also have uh, no other forces on there so that must be equal to zero to be in equilibrium so we can rearrange this there's only one unknown in this equation we can rearrange it and we get that r b x is equal to minus 7.5 kilonewtons where the minus sign is actually telling us our guess for the direction of r b x was wrong and it's actually pointing to the left now we can consider equilibrium in the x direction. So some of the forces in the x direction for the entire structure. So we get Rax plus Rbx must be equal to zero. And therefore Rax is equal to 7.5 kilonewtons and positive so was going in the direction that we'd assumed finally we have one reaction force left ray so i'm going to use some of the forces in the y direction so i get ray pointing upwards must be equal to the 10 kilonewton applied load pointing downwards as positive so it is indeed pointing upwards as we'd originally assumed. So now that we have our reactions we can go on and calculate the forces in the individual bars and so first of all I'm going to assume a free body diagram for joint C. So forces in bars and I'm drawing the free body diagram of joint C so here's my joint and at joint C I'm going to have the vertical force of 10 kilonewtons I will have the internal force NAC, NBC, and the internal force NAC. And I'm assuming that they're pulling away from the joint. And to complete this free body diagram, I need the angle that NBC is going at. And so we have, this would be, Four fifths. So that was three, four, five. So the sine of our angle is going to be opposite over adjacent. So it would be equal to four fifths, and the cos will be equal to three fifths. So considering the sum of the forces in the y direction, first of all, we have minus 10 kilonewtons pointing downwards plus four fifths so the sign of n b c pointing upwards must be equal to zero for equilibrium and therefore we get that n b c equals 12.5 kilonewtons and positive so it means that it was going in the direction we assumed and because of that direction we know that we have tension now considering the sum of the forces in the x direction now so we have n a c but it's going to the left so we'll give it a negative direction and we have the cos of NBC also pointing to the left, so negative. So the cos, which was 3 fifths, multiplied by the magnitude 12.5 kilonewtons, also pointing to the left, must be equal to zero for equilibrium. And we can therefore 
rearrange this equation and we get that NAC is equal to minus 7.5 kilonewtons. So in this case it's minus and therefore we know that it's in compression. We can now proceed on to the free body diagram of joint A. Free body diagram of joint A. So we have on joint A, we have R, A, Y, we have R, A, X, we have N, A, B, the internal force, and we also have N, A, C. In this case, we already know R, A, Y, we already know R, A, X, we already know N, A, C. So all we need to know is NAB from this. So taking some of the forces in the Y direction, let's put them black. Some of the forces in the Y direction, then we have RAY plus NAB must be equal to zero. And we knew that RAY was equal to 10 and was positive, going in the upwards direction. Therefore, when we rearrange, we get that NAB equals minus 10 kilonewtons, or minus meaning that we are in compression. So now we have the full set of internal forces within this truss. We could repeat this method of joint to get the inter little internal forces due to the virtual load. This very special case, the internal load is just one tenth of the value of the external or real load. So we can straight away just divide the answers we got for the real load by 10. So we have, so the virtual internal forces. So normally, if the forces aren't in the same position and aren't in the same direction, we need to use the method of joints. But this very special case, the virtual load is applied in the same direction and at the same place as the real load. And therefore we can just divide by one tenth because the Real load is 10 and the virtual load is just 1. So we know then that NBC equals 1.25 kilonewtons. And that is in tension. We know that NAC equals minus 0 0.75 kilonewtons in compression. And NAB equals minus one kilonewton so therefore compression so now we know all of the real internal forces capital n we know all of the virtual forces little n and now we have every bit of information where we can calculate the deflection and it's very helpful if we actually use a tabular format for doing this summation so what we can do is going to have member A, B, A, C, and B, C. We'll record N, N, L, A, E. And then finally, we'll do a summation of N, N, L divided by A, E for each individual bar. Which then finally we can do the summation of all of these three values that we're filling in. So N we had, let's just draw some lines, make this easy to read. Obviously you could use a spreadsheet program 
to do this and avoid making any mistakes along the way. And be careful with the unit as you go along. So we have A, B. The virtual load was minus, minus 1. A, C was 0 0.75. And B, C was 1.25. And this would have units of kilonewtons. The real loads now. Minus 10, again, kilonewtons. Minus 7.5 and 12.5 the lengths we're going to do these in millimeters so we have a b had a length of four meters or four thousand millimeters a c was three thousand millimeters and b c was five thousand millimeters the area for all of them again was in millimeters squared 301 301 301 and Young's modulus which we're now going to record in kilonewtons per millimeter squared was 200 200 200 and all we need to do now for this final column is do NNL divided by AE and you normally do this in a spreadsheet program so we have 0 0.665, 0 0.280, and 1.298. And we sum all of these values together to find our delta. So delta is equal to 2.24 millimeters, and it will be pointing downwards. So now we're going to proceed to calculate the deflection of joint C in the X direction. This time now, to remind ourselves, we had a truss, joint A, joint B, and joint C. And we could have some reaction forces due to the pin at A. We had a roller at a joint we're calling B. And at C, in the real situation, we had a 10 kilonewton load. However, we're asked to find the horizontal deflections. So in this case, we're going to apply the unit load at the place where we want to find the deflection. So that's a joint C in the direction that we want to find a deflection. So that's a one kilonewton or a unit load at point C placed horizontally. So unfortunately in this case, the unit load is not going in the same direction as the real load. So we're gonna to have to calculate the reactions and then go on to calculate the the loads due to the unit load in each of the bars AC, BC and AB. So let's do that. So let's draw our free body diagrams just as easy to adapt this diagram. So let's call this little r because it's for the unit load. So little r a y. This one's going to be little r a x direction and little r b x so if we draw this is the free body diagram of the entire structure just remember to put our dimensions on there so that was three meters and this is four meters so if we again let's take moments about point a and taking moments about point A, this one goes all the way through there, RAX goes all the way through there, RAY goes all the way through there, so all we have left over is R, B, X, multiplied by a lever arm of four meters, 
negative because it's going in a clockwise manner but there are no other moments on there so that's equal to zero and hence we can calculate r b x is equal to zero so let's do some of the forces in the x direction for the entire structure so we have r b x plus r a x plus one is equal to zero and therefore we can say that r a x is equal to minus one or in other words when it's going to be pointing to the left opposite to the direction that we'd assumed and finally we can do some of the forces in the y direction now and looking at the system we can see that r a y is the only vertical force on the whole system so r a y pointing upwards is equal to nothing pointing downwards So now we wish to calculate the forces in the bar. So to calculate the forces in the bar, we'll draw the free body diagram of joint C first of all. So we have our joint C. We have our unit load of one kilonewtons. We have the force that could be in bar AC, so little n AC, and we have n BC, and again we have 3, 4, 5 triangle. So examining first of all some of the forces in the y direction. And you can see we only have this one force MBC pointing upwards. So some of the forces in the Y direction we have. So the sine, which is four fifths multiplied by NBC is equal to zero. And therefore NBC equals to zero. Now we're gonna have a look at the sum of the forces in the x direction and so we have one kilonewton pointing to the right minus n a c pointing to the left must be equal to zero for equilibrium and therefore rearranging this n a c is equal to one kilonewton positive because it's in the direction we assumed and we're assuming pulling away from the joint, some positive means tension. So we have one more force left to find in the bar, so we need to consider the free body diagram of joint A. We draw our joint A and draw our forces on there, so we have the force N A B N A C the reaction R A X and the reaction little R A Y and we'll consider from there some of the forces in the Y direction so some of the forces in the Y direction we have R A Y we'd already calculated was equal to zero. So therefore we get R A Y plus N A B would be equal to zero. We already know R A Y is equal to zero. And therefore N A B must also be equal to zero. So now we have all of the forces from the unit load. We have previously already calculated the real forces. Just remind ourselves, the real forces were when we analyzed the truss with 
10 kilonewton load on it and we already did this when we were looking at the vertical deflection so we have all of the data that we need for this problem now and again we're going to write all of the data out tabular first to calculate so we have member n n l a e and finally the summation of n n l divided by a e so we have member a b a c and b c and the virtual forces were 0, 1 and 0. We had the real forces of minus 10, minus 7.5 and 12.5. And these were in kilonewtons. We had the lengths of 4,000 millimeters, 3,000 millimeters. And 5,000 millimetres, we had area, which was in millimetres squared of 301, 301, 301. And Young's modulus for all of them, recorded in kilonewtons per millimetre squared of 200, 200 and 200. So... We can do the summations on each row of this table or spreadsheet. And obviously we have a zero here for little n, so the whole of this row will be equal to zero. Same for BC, we had a zero from the virtual load, so the whole will be zero. And finally for AC, we get minus 0.374. And that would be in millimeters. And so the summation now, so delta in the x direction is the sum of these three components, which equals minus 0 0.374 millimeters. And now the minus sign means that the deflection is actually going to the left, i.e. it's the opposite direction from which we applied the virtual load so if we remind ourselves the virtual load was applied in the positive x direction and we got a negative number coming out so we that means that our deflection is going to the left hand side one final other thing we're going to do we're not going to do it all the way through but if we were asked for the virtual for the deflection of joint B, so let's draw our truss. So we have A, C, and B. So B had a roller, and A was fully pinned, and we had the real load of 10 kilonewtons placed here. If we wanted to get the final deflection available in this truss, and that is the deflection of B in the Y direction, what we'd need to do is consider this real situation. That doesn't change. And what we need to do for the virtual situation, we keep exactly the same geometry, exactly the same boundary conditions but now we apply our virtual load at the place where we'd like our deflection in the direction that we'd like our our deflection so i would place a virtual load or unit load at joint b going in a vertical direction